Alright guys, another week and we are back for some more championship transfer rumours. Plenty to go through in today's video. And if you do go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like. We're just over a month away until the January transfer window gets into full swing and already some transfer rumours are starting to pop up and circulate. Before we do jump in, I must say, before we do jump in, a quick shout out to the TikTok. If you're not already following over there, make sure to go ahead and do so. We are posting regular content at the moment. And before we hop into any transfer talk, let's first of all talk about some managerial speculation. So the obvious place to start right now is with Rotherham United. They are still searching for their new first team manager. And I have to admit, now we're into this second week of this international break, the rumours have all gone pretty quiet around Rotherham recently, which either means they're still sounding out potential targets or maybe they've got someone lined up that they've managed to keep under wrap. Now at one stage it was being speculated that maybe it could be Neil Warnock in line for a return to Rotherham. After all, he's already been in that job before and done a tremendous job to keep them in the championship last time. But Warnock has very much made his stance clear that he is willing to return to management in the championship, but he'll only do so in the new year, looking to come in in the final few months as he did with Huddersfield. And obviously Rotherham in the situation they're in now, they can't afford to be in managerial limbo until Warnock Warnock's ready to sort of pick up that mantle around February time. So any Millers fans, so any Millers fans in the comments down below would be interested to get your take on the managerial hunt right now, some of the names that you've been linked to, who would you like to see yourselves going in for, but as of recording, it's all been very quiet on the managerial front for Rotherham. Now without any further ado, let's hop into some transfer talk. The first bit of transfer talk to talk over is Manchester City agreeing a deal for Leeds United youngster Finley Gorman. The 15 year old will move over to Man City as a deal has been agreed of around about £1.2 million, a record deal for a 15-year-old. And prior to this week, I didn't know much about the youngster, but having had a quick glance over his highlight reel, he does look like one hell of a talent. And I mean, we have to say that Leeds have a excellent track record when it comes to developing players, the gems that that Leeds Academy has produced in the past. They've already got a few in their first team ranks right now, but with the resources Manchester City have, they do boast one of the best academies in the world right now and they've managed to prize him away from Leeds but a massive price tag being paid there over a million pounds for a 15 year old and we've got a little bit more transfer talk on some Leeds United youngsters as well because the future of Archie Gray is now up in the air with some massive sides from the Premier League and around Europe reportedly interested in the 17 year old now Archie Gray has enjoyed a fantastic breakthrough season in the championship so far playing both as a holding midfielder and at right back when required he's looked more than up to the standard and given the sort of transfer fees that's paid that are paid out for players with that sort of potential Leeds United could be in for a massive fee here Fabrizio Romano recently confirmed that Liverpool have recently sent scouts to watch Gray they do seem to be the club that has the most interest in Gray right now but other sides such as Borussia Dortmund Newcastle Everton and Manchester City have also been linked with Gray at different points throughout the past couple of weeks. Now it's currently being reported that Leeds value Gray in and around the 40 to 50 million price bracket and the only awkward thing from Leeds's perspective is that Gray's only under contract with them until 2025 so still got a little bit of wiggle room there but it would certainly play to their advantage if they can get Gray tied down to a new long-term contract before we get into the summer before those serious conversations were to be had about where that next club may be. United fans how much would you value Gray at? Let me know down below. St. Pat's youngster Adam Murphy is attracting interest from plenty of championship clubs right now with the likes of Southampton and Bristol City both credited with interest as well as them. The likes of Derby County, Manchester City and Crystal Palace have all been linked. This link here coming from Team Talk claiming that a lot of scouts have been in attendance to watch him recently and given his current contract situation he would be available at a cut price for a deal with compensation worth around about £200,000 in January. Murphy still only 18 years old and in the early stages of his career but this would be an interesting snatch up for one of those championship clubs especially. Another youngster on the watch list for Southampton right now is Darren Robinson currently on the books of Derby County as well as Southampton Aston Villa also reportedly hold an interest. Now it's certainly been the template that Southampton have gone after recently for young upcoming players who they can develop themselves and you can certainly see where these sort of links have come from. Bit of an update on the future 
of Ahmad Diallo at Manchester United as well. Obviously enjoyed a fantastic loan spell with Sunderland last season in the Championship and I'm sure Sunderland will be one of the clubs trying to inquire about potentially bringing him back in January on a loan deal until the end of the season. However, if they are to do that, they will face some serious competition because recent reports have linked Wolves to the Manchester United winger and he's also got some potential suitors in Saudi Arabia as well. A really interesting report recently coming out uh, from football transfers claiming that the Ivory Coast International has a market there in Saudi Arabia that one of those clubs would be interested to bring him in. Now it was thought at the start of the season that Diallo would have an impact on Ten Hag's squad this season being in and around the first team because of injuries that's not been able to happen so far and it could now be the plan where Man United have to send him out for the second half of the season so he gets himself fully back from that injury and gets himself properly up to speed elsewhere. Like I say I think Sunderland would be a great destination for him he would get that regular first team football he already knows the majority of the squad there Tony Mowbray knows how to get the best out of him and the fans absolutely love him but potentially some clubs higher up the pecking order could swoop in for him first. Newport County's Will Evans reportedly has some admirers in the championship with both Swansea and Huddersfield keeping tabs on the versatile forward. Now the 26 year old has had an eye catching start to the season in League 2 screen 10 goals and picking up an assist in his first 18 league matches. He's also out of contract next summer as well and so the interest is bound to be there. Wouldn't be surprised if a few League 1 clubs potentially threw their hats in the ring for this one either. But one to keep your eye on over the next few weeks. Bit of news regarding Joe Rodon recently as well. No doubt that his loan spell with Leeds United has gone really well so far. I think he's been an excellent fit into that Daniel Farkas side. And let's not forget just how shaky Leeds were at the back last season in the Premier League. Rodon's been one of the defenders added into that system. I think he's had a tremendous impact in positively impacting that Leeds United defence. Now, a permanent move is already being rumoured for Rodon. It's currently being suggested that Spurs will be looking for a price tag of around about £20 million. Now, if Leeds were to be promoted back up to the Premier League, I'm sure they could make that sort of fee up. But if they were still to be in the Championship, I just don't see that as realistic. Now, it's also worth pointing out as well that Rodon is only under contract at Tottenham until the summer of 2025. And so from Spurs' perspective, coming up to next summer, if Rodon continues to do well, that will be their prime and probably last real chance to properly cash in on him so they'll be looking to get as much money as possible. From a Leeds United perspective I'd be interested to know if you think that would be a reasonable price tag if you were promoted to the Premier League or you'd be looking to bargain a little bit cheaper considering his contract situation. And a potential outgoing from Leeds that's been rumoured for January is Wilfred Nonto. Now this one is especially interesting as the interested party or one of the more recent clubs to be linked with Nonto is actually Tottenham and so there have been some suggestions that maybe a swap deal could be in the line uh, later down the works for Nonto going one way, Road on heading to Ellen Road on a permanent basis. And I mean, Leeds United fans, whether or not you would think that would be good business. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has commented on this. He said there is a possibility that Nonto could leave Leeds in January, but negotiating with Leeds is never easy. Obviously, plenty of drama going on with Nonto in the summer where he was kicking up a fuss wanting to get out at one point. It was Everton, the interested party. That didn't move that move didn't materialise in the end and Nonto has since settled down. But the closer we get to January, the more rumours surrounding Nonto I think we're probably likely to get. And there's also been a little bit of paper talk recently about John Buckley and the potential that he could get recalled in the January window. Now, Buckley uh, went out on loan to Sheffield Wednesday late in the window from Blackburn Rovers. Since heading to Hillsborough, not had the greatest of times. Obviously, it's a tough environment to go into there at Sheffield Wednesday, but started five matches matches this season, uh, coming as a substitute on five occasions as well, and has ultimately struggled to make an impact like the vast majority of players at Wednesday so far this season. John Dahl Thomason recently spoke on Buckley, sort of said that he understands he's in a difficult situation at the moment, and so the potential for a recall in January is reportedly being considered by Blackburn. Buckley's 24 years old now, his career lately has started to stall, I think thinking about the highs of the 21-22 season and how 
how good and influential Buckley actually was at points for Blackburn. Wednesday aren't getting that out of him at the moment and I mean I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if Blackburn do take up the option to recall him. Well guys there you have it that will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you didn't see the transfer rumour roundup video we did last week as well make sure to go ahead and check that one out. We discussed plenty more rumours that we didn't touch on in today's video. As always though if you did go to enjoy make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. Plenty coming out over these next few weeks and months which you'll want to stick around for. If you're not already make sure to go ahead and give a follow over on TikTok as well. But apart from that thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next one.